welcome to this episode of the Sharpening Report. My name is Sam Johnson and I'm your host. Tonight we have a great show about quantum physics, eschatology, the science behind demon possession, and the science behind God's omnipresence. We are joined by author and TV host, someone you may recognize, uh, Josh Peck. He is the author of Quantum Creation, Cherubim and Chariots, and the book we're going to be talking about today, Abaddon Ascending. Well, Josh, welcome to the Sharpening Report. I guess should I say welcome back. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Sam. It's good to see you, and uh, I'm excited about this. I'm uh, really excited to see how your first episode is going to go, and uh, it's this is actually my first time, I think, as guest uh, on the Sharpening <laughs> Report. So, uh, yeah, all around, it's very exciting, and uh, I, I should tell the people at home, too, in case they're wondering, you know, kind of what's going on. Uh, Sam, Sam's going to be the new host, and we're actually moving everything onto a new channel, uh, which should be ready in July. Uh, but we want to jump in and start doing some new episodes uh, as soon as possible. So the, the new episodes that are coming out like this one will be on my channel for the time being. Then they're, they'll be moved over to the new channel. Um, and, and yeah, we're thinking probably somewhere in July. But uh, yeah, so for, for all the TSR fans out there, stay with us. Uh, we got some really exciting stuff coming up. And uh, this, uh, but yeah, I'm excited about this. So I don't, I don't want to talk too much about that. Um, how are you doing, Sam? Yeah, I'm doing great. You know, it's a thrill to be here. I'm really excited to finally be doing the first interview. And who, what, what a better person to do than the creator of the show. So um, anyway, let's just dive into it. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about Abaddon Ascending, uh, the book you wrote with uh, Thomas Horn. I guess the first question I would have for you um, is, how did you take the two most complicated and difficult topics to understand, which is quantum physics and uh, eschatology, the, the end times, and put them both in a book and then actually make it easy to understand. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I, I first got interested in quantum physics because of my wife. Uh, she's a big time science nerd, as am I, but I really learned a lot just about the writing process, about researching, about how to uh, actually put something like this together in a way that people can understand, which that, that goes to the second part of your question, how, how to how to write something about eschatology and quantum physics that people can understand. And it, it's it's difficult, uh, but that, that was, Tom really helped me out a lot with that. With with my previous books, uh, Quantum Creation and Cherubim Chariots, it was relatively simple because I took really basic, uh, basic ideas, um, and uh, you know, like what 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 is a particle? You know, I mean, it wasn't like kindergarten level stuff, but it, it was it was still it was it was easy. But th this was this book was going to tackle something way more in depth you know it, it was going to tackle like quantum field theory and cern and and uh you know the book of ezekiel and and the the, the weird uh parts of revelation like the whole thing isn't weird but like revelation 9 with the locusts and it, it was it was getting into some really heavy areas and so uh i i remember you know tom and i met a lot to you know work on this book and everything and i remember asking him um you know how how I, I I like being the guy that can explain things simply, but I'm having a hard time with this because he was even telling me when I would give him rough drafts of some chapters, you, you, you know, you should, you should, uh, this is good, but you should, you should try to find a, a way to explain it that's a little easier for people to, to grasp. So he, he really helped me out a lot in those regards, uh, just knowing when things are too complex and, um, you know, kind of when to just hit the main points and things like that. And then if people want to research further on their own, uh, you know, that's what footnotes are for. And uh, so he, he helped me out a lot with that. Uh, so I, I believe that uh, we together, we were able to put out a book that is very in-depth, but it's also, I, I, I hope and pray that it, it's easy enough that the, the general public's going to understand it just fine. And so far, I haven't heard any feedback from people saying that it was over their heads. Uh, so that that's that's a long-winded answer to your first question. <laughs> yeah, I, I read the whole book. Uh, it was, it's, you know, it's one of those books that's hard to put down because it's so fascinating the way you are able to tie in quantum physics into the Bible and just the way you show the relation between science and the Bible. It's not at odds, but they work very well together. Uh, but that being said, let's just dive into some topics onto the book. Um, one thing I found really interesting, and I guess it's a good way to, to jump into the weirdness of quantum physics, is you had a quote from um, Sean Carroll in there that said, that there is no particles uh, in the world. 
kind of what does that mean? Expand on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And th th this was one of the most mind blowing things for me, but also the most difficult to grasp. And I still uh, kind of struggle to find a good way to explain it. Um, I actually just did a show on uh, the Vigilant Christian uh, Mario Brisson and his his channel, and we talked we talked about this. And uh, I won't I won't. It, it took me like an hour and a half just to get through, but I won't do that here. But <laughs> through yeah. that, through that though, I was able to kind of uh, find some better ways to to explain it. But basically, so for for those who aren't familiar, uh, I quote Sean Carroll a lot in the book, and it, it's because he's uh, he he's he, he's a physicist, but he's able to explain things in a way that people like me and you can understand, and and that's that's what I want. You know, that that's what I want to bring uh, to the Christian audience. Sean Carroll is not a Christian, uh, but we should all be praying for him. Uh, he does he does allow uh, a Christian a Christian physicist named Don Page. I have an interview with him in the book. Uh, he does allow him to do guest blogs and stuff for his website. So you know there's 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 hope. <laughs> but um, but uh, he he's not a Christian, but he he's he's very science minded, very much a physicist. But he's he has a way of explaining things that that are uh, easier than. Uh, most physicists. So in this presentation that I found of him uh, online, and people can look it up, uh, if they look up uh, Sean Carroll uh, presentation, particles, fields, so something like that, it'll probably come up. Uh, but he was talking about what's called quantum field theory, and it's actually the most accurate science known to man. It it, it produces a, a predictions like many orders of magnitude greater than any other science in the world. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's extremely accurate. And uh, actually, and we'll probably get into this a little later, but the, the LHC at CERN, the big particle collider at CERN, wouldn't work if quantum field theory was incorrect. So it's an accurate, uh, it's an accurate portrayal of reality as we know it. Basically what it says is, that the world isn't made of particles the way that we think of particles. Like technically particles exist just because we've given them that term. But usually when we think of a particle, we think of like a little ball of matter and uh, you know, they combine together. Reality isn't, doesn't really work that way. What, what we think of as a particle is, is, is actually a wave. Uh, and that, that, that's what Sean Carroll meant when he said that particles don't really exist. It's the, the real reality is waves in what are called quantum fields. Quantum fields permeate all of space. They're everywhere around. Uh, we have like the gravitational field. Uh, it's, it's everywhere, even, even uh, out in the furthest reaches of space where there's nothing to um, increase the gravity field or increase the energy of the gravity field. There's still a gravity field there. Um, so here, because we live on planet Earth, uh, the gravity field is affected by the Earth, and we're attracted to the Earth uh, because of that bend in, in, in the field. So every field is like that. The electromagnetic field is like that. That's why magnets stick to refrigerators. Um, so it, it's, uh, it's, it's essentially energy. Uh, a particle is really just a ripple in that energy or in a field. So an electron is a, it's a ripple or a wave in the electron field. There's no actual little sphere of, uh, there, there's no actual like piece of matter um, that what, what we normally think of as a particle. It's actually more like a packet of energy. Um, well, it, it's, it's really, even, even that is a little deceptive because it's, it's really a, it, it's, it's a ripple in a field. It's like, it's like a wave. So the real reality are, are quantum fields. That's the real reality. Everything that we see and interact with, all, all everything is just interactions with different fields. It's, it's fields interacting with other fields. That's all it is, um, which is weird. And we're usually not taught that in school. Usually in high school science class, we're taught particle physics, which it, it's, it's fine. It's accurate. It's just not complete um, because it doesn't tell you what, the, what the particle is made out of or what really a particle is. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, something that Sean Carroll said, he said, uh, you know, how many times have we been asked the question or thought about the question, light, is it a particle or a wave? And he's like, you know, we're never given an answer to that, but I'm here to tell you, I'm going to give you the answer. It's a wave. <laughs> there is no actual particle. It's, it's, it's a wave. Uh, so that was really interesting to me. And the whole presentation is like two hours long, but it, it's fascinating stuff. Um, so quantum field theory, because that's how reality works, 
uh, that's how particle colliders can create new particles out of like protons. You know, the, the, the LHC at CERN collides protons together uh, to create something like a Higgs boson, which was discovered in 2012. And a lot of that has a lot of people confused. Like, well, how, you know, do, do the protons combine together to create this particle? Like, are the pieces of the proton still in the Higgs boson? And no, it doesn't work at all like that. Um, what, what's actually happening is you have two ripples in the same field, in the proton field. You have two ripples that are colliding together. And when that happens, a lot of energy is released into the other fields that are around. Every particle has a field, and every field has a particle to it. So there's an up quark field and an electron field. Um, uh, for for photons, it's the electromagnetic field. Like when when the electromagnetic field vibrates, that 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 vibration is the photon. So when they collide these these packets of energy together, it creates even more energy because they're doing this at near light speed, and it it resonates out and ripples these other quantum fields. And then they have detectors up so they can detect if a field they haven't discovered yet ripples because they, they'll be able to tell by the properties of of the you know the the particle the the packet of energy. Uh, and that's what happened in 2012 uh, when they discovered the Higgs boson, you know, the God particle, and it made all the all the news. And then somehow, uh, because physicists aren't really great at communicating how this how this stuff works, it was getting out there that the Higgs boson is what gives us mass, and it's not. It's not at all. Like the Higgs boson is kind of interesting, but what it really meant, the the real discovery is because there's a Higgs boson, it means there's a Higgs field. It's proof that there's a field that we interact with, that our, the particles that make up our body interact with, uh, that's what gives us mass. Mass is just an interaction. You know, it's not, it's not just the earth like pulling down on us, you know, it's a piece of it, but it's not like actual physical substance is in its uh, interaction with, with this field. And that was the real discovery. That that was like what blew physics wide open. And and this was only five years ago that this happened. So there's still a lot to discover. But um, but it got miscommunicated to the press, and the press uh, instead of trying to like trying to get it right, you know, and trying to get it accurate, um, and at the same time, instead of physicists thinking and you know trying to come up with a way to explain it. Uh, you basically got like two ends of this horrible coin that just put out a story that wasn't true. <laughs> you know, they they did discover a Higgs boson, but that wasn't that important. And uh, the, the the real importance was the field. Uh, but it's the Higgs boson doesn't give us mass. It it also shouldn't have been called the God particle. That was a big marketing thing. Um, it, it's the only thing it has to do with God is what every particle has to do with God, that he created it. You know, you could call the electron the God particle, for, but it has nothing, there's nothing God-like, there's nothing like God-like or there, there's nothing about it that they should have called it that. You know, it just doesn't make any sense, it, but it was just a big marketing thing. Well, I find I find the name actually really interesting that they call it the God particle, and a lot of people put a big G at the beginning. Do you think? I mean, especially with the way you put it in with the whole uh, Tom Horner writes all about like the ancient religions and that sort of thing. Do you think they call it the God particle, and we're just in, we're just assuming it's the wrong God? Do you think it's maybe more applicable to you know their esoteric God and their maybe uh, the ancient gods that they're trying to resurrect, or even the portal aspect that you mentioned? Well, that's a, that's a really good point. Yeah, uh, uh, there 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 is there seems to be this shadow governing body at CERN, and, and I uh, this is going to sound conspiratorial in like nut job land, but uh, there there is actual quotes and reasons to believe this. I I don't believe like ninety nine percent of the people that work at CERN, I think they're just physicists and scientists, and they just want to know about reality, and they don't have anything nefarious in mind, but. I do believe that there's like 1% that's behind the scenes that that's actually trying to do some messed up stuff. Um, and, and what, one of, one of the reasons that, uh, Tom and I believe this is, is exactly what you brought up. Um, so for, for those who, who might not be familiar, um, the LHC, the large Hadron collider, and basically all that means Hadron is a type of particle. It collides them and it's very big. So large Hadron <laughs> Collider. Uh, and uh, CERN is is the governing body that decides what this machine is going to be used for. Um, so the land that the LHC is built on uh, even had the, the uh, and even the name CERN ha has 
really unexpected details in ancient history. Uh, so it was built over. It, it right now it's built on the border of France and um, and Switzerland, which is like a weird place. You know, who's going to build a machine like on the border of two countries? Like they like it's just weird, and. They'll say, well, real estate out there is very, uh, very expensive. Okay, build it somewhere else. <laughs> you know, why does it have to be on the border of those two? And then it's also built underground, which there's no real reason it has to be. Uh, there are particle colliders. You can have a particle collider. It doesn't have to be built underground. But then they'll say again, well, it's there's a city, you know, that it's built under, and you know, real estate's expensive, and they don't want to. They don't want to have a big machine in their city. Okay, well, build it somewhere else. You know, they would be able to save a lot of money if they don't. They don't have to build it underground. It, it doesn't protect from radiation. It doesn't have anything to do with any of that. Uh, so it's weird. It's just it's weird that they did that. Um, but when you actually find out why that land, and this is why I believed in the the the, the one percent CERN governing body shadow thing, uh, the actual land is is was sacred to ancient uh worshipers of apollo or apollyon from the book of revelation wow. or abaddon uh in, in, the, in the hebrew so it was built over a roman city actually called apollyacum uh or apoliacum there's there's a couple different ways of saying it and yeah they worshiped they worshiped apollo that was their god and they they actually believed that was where the bottomless pit was located uh so it's it, it's really it's really weird so if there are people who make decisions, uh, you know, that are deciding the location of this thing, and if they do believe in that, that that's the bottomless pit and, you know, all that stuff, and I'm not saying that it is, it's just they believe it is, uh, then it makes sense why they would want to build it there. So it's totally weird. And then especially when you have uh, people like the science director uh, at CERN, uh, Sergio Bertolucci, he's the director for research and scientific computing at CERN. He's actually quoted, and this isn't some weird conspiracy thing. This is on their website, on CERN's website. Uh, they they make all this stuff public because they know they can. They have no accountability because nobody's look, looking for this stuff. Uh, but he's actually quoted as saying, we plan to open a portal into an extra dimension out of this door might come something unknown. Uh, so very strange. And, uh, and and that does sound like, you know, weird conspiracy theories. Like, oh, CERN is trying to open a portal. Yeah, right. Well, you have the science director on record saying that. Uh, but they also have released documentaries about how they plan to do this actually using gravity. Um, and uh, so this, this could be this could be the the answer to how to interpret Revelation nine, uh, which is basically the the, the locusts and you know the, that whole thing. Um, it could be. Uh, now, of course, we know because Revelation nine says that uh, the the keys of the bottomless pit are given to an angel, um, but we also learn from Revelation two that Jesus is the one that has the keys to death and hell. So I think what's going on there is at some point humanity needs to be judged. Um, and God is allowing this angel to open the bottomless pit to, to judge the unrepentant world. Because it also says those locusts only attack the people without the seal of God on their foreheads. Uh, so this is something that Christians are, you know, whatever is, whatever humanity is doing that's allowing this angel with the key to the bottomless pit to open it, um, Christians aren't comfortable with it. And I don't know of any Christian that <laughs> that you know that I know personally that's that's comfortable with anything CERN is doing. Yeah, uh, that's that's really well put, and a lot of I appreciate the background and all the information, things like that. So, kind of going back a little bit to to the science aspect of things, uh, you talked about the the different fields and the way that particles are really just kind of vibrations or you know just energy. Uh, kind of applying that to the biblical perspective is especially I think the two things that pop into my mind is one like. God spoke everything into earth, which I think is a really cool idea that 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 the science backs it up. And then two, God being everywhere, he could just be a, a field that kind of in, in, gets involved with everything. Uh, is that kind of something that that the science backs up or am I way off on that? Well, you know, what's interesting is they they uh, physicists are looking for uh, a unified field theory. You know, they want to figure out how they can mathematically unify the four forces, which is uh, gravity, electromagnetism, uh, strong nuclear and weak nuclear forces. They've they've been able to make a lot of headway in doing that with 
the, the strong and weak nuclear and the electromagnetic field, but gravity is different. Gravity, for some reason, it's a lot weaker than the other forces. But they are looking for uh, an elementary field. And basically, the word elementary just means that's as far as you can break it down. Uh, so let's say you have an atom. And, and an atom would not be considered an elementary particle because it's made of other particles. You have an electron that spins around uh, protons, neutrons, uh, and then even the protons and neutrons are made of quarks and gluons and different forces are involved. Uh, something like a quark would be an elementary particle because as far as we know, it's not made of smaller parts. Uh, so they're, they're looking for the same thing in fields. They, they, know of, um, they know of about 12 fields. They know that they, there are 12 fields. Basically, every particle is some type of combination of 12 foundational particles. This is all like what's called the standard model of physics. Uh, so what what they're wondering is can it be even can it be broken down even more than that is there is there one single field that all these other fields uh, come from it, you know can it be looked at it, it can it be looked at in that way so there are physicists that are actively pursuing that as a possibility um, and if so uh, it, you know e e even if not God directly it's certainly a creation of God and and how how that all works I'm not sure but it is really interesting that you brought up. Uh, uh, Hebrews 11.3, because, uh, yeah, it says that uh, God spoke things into existence and, and things that are visible are made of things invisible. And the way that I look at the, the spoken word of creation, you know, time would be in there too. You know, time, time is a creation of God's as well, which means that uh, in eternity, which eternity just means a, a state outside of time, um, free, free, from, free from time, from that state... God spoke time and everything into existence. And one, a big thing that physicists don't ever want to touch is that they'll say, okay, something's vibrating the, these fields, but they don't know what. You know, the only thing, and only a couple will even admit to this, uh, the only thing that you might hear them say is, well, it's got to be something extra dimensional, but we, we don't really have any clue. We, we have no idea. Well, we know that energy can't be created or destroyed. That's essentially, you know, energy just, it, 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 can, it can transfer states and it can change, but it can't be created or destroyed. Um, so if you have God outside of time, this is, this is, you know, time isn't even a thing yet. And even that terminology isn't right because for there <laughs> to be a yet, there would have to be a before and, you know, it, it doesn't work that way. But I only know time, so I can't, I don't, I can't understand, you know, no human being could understand what, timelessness would be like. Um, but when he's, I, I believe when he spoke everything into existence, I believe that's still happening now. When he did that, the entire timeline came out, came out and was, was birthed, was, was brought forth from the beginning to the end, all of it, uh, in that single word, uh, spoken word of creation, uh, all of it. So what that means, uh, and it would have to be because time wasn't even created yet. You know, it, it would have to be. What that means is that we are actively right now a direct product of the voice of God. Like right now, he, oh. he, he, he's still speaking. That's what our bodies are, our souls and our spirits. Now you can look at your hand. The only reason that you even have a hand that's made of particles, that it's, it's a direct uh, manifestation of the, the spoken word of God. I mean, we are we're the, in the image of God. That's what that means. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? That is as mind blowing. I've never heard it it's said like that, and that's uh, that's incredible. Wow, <laughs> that's that's amazing. Yeah, that that that's what gets me excited about this kind of stuff. <laughs> that's that's very cool. Uh, so kind of I guess so talking about the different dimensions and jumping between uh you know our dimension, the third dimension, or the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, there's this idea of quantum computing. Um. And, and I, I know it, that that idea comes across in m many different ways to the conspiracy theorists who may be watching. It's very much they apply it to Jade Helm and that whole that whole narrative. And but then there's a the physicist side. So kind of explain what is quantum computing? What does that mean for everyday people? Sure. So basically, quantum computing and there 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 is a. There's a wealth of conspiratorial, non-science, you know, just speculation out there in the world about quantum computing. Uh, but basically, when you look into it, it's it's not as scary as like some would have you believe. But there there is also there are things to be concerned with. There there are issues. Um, 
the way that quantum computers work, and I do believe that quantum computers will be the next the next big thing. You know, I think the internet was the la the the latest big thing that really changed the world. I think quantum computing is going to be like the next like one of those, um, because uh, photons uh, and and certain other particles they have this ability called quantum entanglement. And it's really mysterious and it's weird and physicists don't understand how it works or because it, it, it supposedly breaks the laws of known physics, which just means that physics isn't complete, which is really exciting because that means there's new things to learn. Um, but what it means is somehow if you have like an entangled pair of photons, uh, you, 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 you run some photons through a, a beam splitter and they're entangled, you can have, and there's other ways to do that, but... Uh, this just happens naturally, uh, but um, you could have one photon on one end of the universe and one photon on the other end, and they can communicate with each other uh, at an instant, faster than the speed of light. I mean, it's, it's not even, speed isn't even a relevant term anymore. It's just instantly. They can communicate with one another. They, they, they know what the other is doing, because if you alter one, the other one alters as well. And physicists have a real hard time with this, because it it breaks the laws of physics. You know, I, Einstein showed that you can't, you, you just can't go faster than the speed of light because you run into all sorts of uh, issues. So um, now obviously they haven't measured it to the scales of the universe, but they have been able to measure entangled particles at great enough distance that if there was any time, if there was any time uh, between the interactions, they would have been able to measure it. Uh, and there haven't been. So, what quantum computing does is it, it utilizes quantum entanglement to, uh, to transfer information faster than light, you know, at an absolute instant, which on the surface would seem pretty cool. You know, I, there are times that I have to wait for a document to open or I got to wait for the Internet to open or, uh, oh, my gosh, in video editing. And you know this, you're a video editor, too. There are times that you just there are times and I, I do this for a living at Skywatch. Like I, I edit all the Skywatch TV episodes and into the multiverse. And, you know, I, I do a lot of this stuff. But there are times that, like, I just want to work and my computer won't let me. I got to sit there and wait for it to background render. And I'm just waiting. And it would be nice if that could just be done instantly. <laughs> you know, I could get a lot more done. But at the same time, what, what concerns me about it is they don't know how this phenomenon works. And the only, the only hypothesis that sort of makes some sense on how it might work uh, is photons might be utilizing higher dimensions of space, possibly even time, uh, in order to do this. Uh, for, for example, if we think about, you know, a triangle, a uh, triangle, if you add up the angles, you get 180 degrees. Uh, that, that's how many degrees are, you know, in, in any, any kind of triangle. But what, what happens if you measure a triangle and you get, you get uh, something that's greater than 180 degrees? Well, then either, you know, either you're not good at counting or something else is going <laughs> on here, you know. What, what, if, what if that law of two-dimensional physics is broken? Well, you, that you can have that if the triangle is on a sphere. You know, if you add a third dimension to it, then you can have things that seem impossible, uh, but but actually are in, you know they're they're really possible when you know so if a triangle is on a sphere then you can have greater than 180 degrees depending you know how much curvature there is in the sphere and things like that uh, when you add extra dimensions you're able to get stranger phenomenon you know three three dimensional physics or four dimensional if we're counting time it's not really complete because there are other dimensions there's there's I think there's 12 altogether but um, there, there are higher dimensions that also operate by laws of physics. And what we see in our three-dimensional world is only a slice of that. Just like if there was a two-dimensional world, uh, and I use this analogy all the time, uh, and so does every physicist that talks about extra dimensions. Chuck Missler uses it too. Uh, Flatland. If there's a two-dimensional universe called Flatland, and if they measure, if they measure uh, phys their physics... It's not going to be complete, you know, because they don't have access to the third dimension. Like if it if it's flat, they wouldn't know about gravity, you know. They they would have no clue because they they don't have up or down, so they don't know that they're being pulled down. They're not being pulled down on anything. Um, they wouldn't have no way to measure that. Now, if it was vertical, then they could, you know. Right. But but they would also they would have different limitations even with that. So I I think we're looking at something similar, and physicists believe this too that we're looking at something similar with higher. Uh, dimensions and it seems like there's some very important people in the world that believe 
it's possible for us to interact with higher dimensions and for higher dimensions to interact with us. Um, but yeah, that, that's basically like the whole extra. Oh, oh but you, you were asking about quantum computers. So my, my concern is if quantum entanglement does utilize extra dimensions to operate, and I, I, believe, I believe it does because I don't, again, when you have these uh, uh, physical laws that are being broken, usually the answer is, is higher dimensions. Um, if we utilize quantum computing, we're sending information into higher dimensions. Who knows what or who or what you know is is receiving it or what what they could do with it? You know, there there's mm -hmm. that whole angle there, and there's there's also the angle like does that count as trying to uh, communicate with uh, demons and and fallen angels and things like that? Is this like a second heaven type of thing? Uh, so there there are those issues, but e even even outside of that, um, and there's a big push in the world right now towards quantum computing, and, and especially, uh, and I don't believe it's any coincidence, uh, coming from CERN, because CERN, they, they record, th these particle collisions are, are, are petabytes and petabytes of information. You know, they, they have a hard time storing all this information. They, they, they've actually just started dumping a bunch of it onto the internet, you know, because they can't <laughs> analyze uh, they could have discovered every no. They, they could have discovered every particle in existence, but they have so much data that they have to weed through. They wouldn't know it, uh, so they've been putting it on the internet, hoping that they can get some help just from amateur physicists and and people who know how to read that stuff, because um, there's just not enough people to do it. So what they they. CERN, they, you know, they believe that they would really benefit from something like quantum computing because if you could have a machine analyze all that data and store it uh, through quantum entanglement, you could store stuff. Uh, you, you would you would have limitless storage capacity, basically, especially if it's utilizing uh, higher dimensions. Um, and it would be at an instant. All this would just ju it would just be done for you, you know, uh, which. You know, again, sort of sounds like a nice idea. It'd be nice to know things, but, you know, the people in charge, what are they going to do with that information? If they find a unified field theory, you know, what are they going to do with that? Um, there's This actually gets into consciousness because along with quantum computing, to, to for CERN to really use it for what they want to use it for, they need some type of artificial intelligence to, to drive it because... Uh, you can't just teach a computer what to look for. You got to have something that can think to know what to look for. That's why people analyze the data. Um, mm. You have to have a, a thinking thing. So they're also trying to develop uh, artificial intelligence, which that's no secret. I mean, there's been a bunch of attempts made online, which is kind of funny because it, you know every, every time they they develop one of these things and it's released online. Uh, <laughs> The artificial intelligence starts getting influenced by people online, and then <laughs> then it starts saying things like "Bush did 9/11," and it gets really racist <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, there's still there's still some bugs they have to work out, but uh -huh. uh, but 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 you know, in their view, they 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 want to have some type of artificial intelligence to analyze all this data. Now, what's what's frightening about that is your 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 if you have a true artificial intelligence, we have no way of knowing if it's actually truly artificial or if it's something like a demon could inhabit or a fallen mm -hmm. angel or Satan himself. You know, we, we have no way of knowing that. You know, we know uh, devils can possess people, uh, even even animals. So, you know, why not? Why not machines? Um, so there's there's that aspect to it, but there's also this big question and I, I deal with this in the book. There's this big question of consciousness. Physicists have no idea what consciousness is, you know, just, just the, the, the state of being self-aware. They, they don't know what's causing that. Uh, you know, you, you can, uh, we're biologically no different from somebody who, like, died a minute ago, you know, but they're not conscious anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so what, what, what's the difference? And one of the leading theories is called, but most physicists don't take this seriously, but it's the only, it's the only theory right now. It's called uh, quantum brain dynamics. And the idea is consciousness might sort of be like mass in that uh, consciousness might be an interaction with a quantum field. Now, this wouldn't have anything to do with the spirit or the soul or anything like that. This is just, uh, you know, biological, physiological consciousness. You know, animals would be subject to this, too. That may, maybe consciousness is, is just an interaction with a field. Now, if that's true... 
Uh, they've, they've even come up with names for this hypothetical field. It's called the cortical field. And because every field has a particle associated, the, the, the particle to the field is uh, called a corticon. Totally hypothetical at this point, but uh, with what they're doing at CERN, discovering new particles, there could come a day where they said that uh, you turn on the news and it's the next Higgs boson thing. You know, we discovered the corticon. It's the particle that makes you conscious. And, you know, I'm sure yeah. it'll get spun like that in some weird way. But, uh, but they could they could discover this. And if they do, to them, they just cashed in. Because right now, the way that they're trying to develop artificial intelligence, they have to hire a lot of programmers. Uh, it, it costs a lot of money, a lot of time, and it's just next it's just an impossible feat. But if they can uh, if they can create and manipulate corticons, you know, if, if if you know the particle of consciousness, they could put that in a machine and just develop artificial intelligence with them. I mean, it would be it would be a lot more cost effective, way cheaper. Instead of having mm -hmm. a whole team of developers and coders to do this, you could have like just one guy do it, uh, and they don't have to do anything different than what they're already doing at CERN. You know, with these car these these particle collisions and things. Uh, so that could be their ticket into uh, artificial intelligence. So if you unleash that with quantum computing, you know, access to, so, okay, we, we've created consciousness and there's a conscious being that we made and let's just give it access to things we don't even know about and see what happens, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so yeah. uh, that I could be, and this, this is speculative, that might be what the image of the beast is all about. Could be. Mm -hmm. Um, because if we if we think about who you know what we are, we're the image of God, you know the creative voice of God, and we interact in these fields, and you know we're we're the image of God. So how could how could the enemy twist something like that? Uh, well, if you if you merge uh, artificial intelligence with quantum computing, that could be a way to do it. So, um, but but basically that that's that's the danger in quantum computing. If the world gets connected, and I believe it probably will, if the world gets connected in with uh, quantum computing. Um, yeah, we'll be able to get a lot more stuff done, and it'll probably make life more convenient in, in some areas, but other areas, uh, we're going to be a lot more exposed. I mean, remember remember before the internet, there was, you know, this this thing called privacy that people had, <laughs> and it just doesn't exist anymore. But the, the, the scariest thing is we give up our privacy. We are the ones freely telling Facebook every detail of our day. You know, Facebook isn't asking us that. The internet isn't yeah. making us do any of that. We we, we kind of have this this want uh, to, to, to be exposed if we think that, you know, like in a prideful way, if we, if we think we can be impressive or somebody's going to be impressed by that. Uh, well, I think quantum computing is the next level of that, except it won't be just like a, a physical type of thing. It's, it's going to be more on a spiritual level. You know, we're going to be exposed right. spiritually, uh, yeah. which which is da it, it's dangerous. So yeah, that's that's in a nutshell. Well, a very large nutshell, but that's <laughs> that's quantum computing and uh, all that stuff. Yeah, you paint a really good picture of the duality of CERN. On on one hand, if you're just looking at it purely from the science aspect, they're just doing these things. They're trying to find this new field. And then now they need more compute, computing to record everything. And now they need someone to to sift through the data so they create artificial intelligence. It seems pretty innocent from that aspect. But then you have this, I guess, more conspiratorial view of it is you have these scientists who have stated trying to, they're trying to reach another dimension. And they're trying to create a computer that can communicate with another dimension. And now they're trying to cre create something that they can house something from another dimension. So it's it's kind of a it's an interesting duality that, that you paint there. Um, so, so you talk a lot about uh, the how to inter how our consciousness can be um, influenced if the right technology is created. And you even talked about how uh, a lot of the, the technocracy movement or um, can affect us. So, expand on that a little bit. Right, and I'm glad you brought that up. That's a whole other side to this. If uh, if if and it would be it would be the governments of the world that would have access you know uh th this type of thing you know quantum computing might be available to the con consumer but actually being able to manipulate uh corticons if they exist creating consciousness that that's that likely will will be held you know just, just for the governments but there's a whole other side to this and i'm glad that you brought this up uh if they can create consciousness they can also alter consciousness that already exists just like they can alter any particle they can alter any field they can send energy into fields um if consciousness is an interaction in a field like that 
they uh, that is a weapon of unimaginable magnitude that is like in the wrong hands that is hive mind across the whole world like that's like and and it reminds me of uh, uh the tower of babel incident and he, here's something that not a lot of people know um in in the in, in scripture it says that uh during the whole tower of babel nimrod you know all that stuff that the the entire world they were gathered in one place and it says they were of one language and one speech and it's weird it, it's it's weird in the english because it's it's like well that's just saying the same thing twice okay they all spoke the same language uh that's only what one of those words in hebrews uh in hebrew means the other one means a, a mindset like like a, a like a belief system or or um like a a motivation a, like a like a mindset and, and i i like i liken it to like a hive mind they're all sort of thinking the same thing now i don't know how nimrod did that probably through a lot of fear tactics and stuff like that but the uh, board. yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah exactly that's that's exactly what it is so i i think that if if they develop this type of technology where they can actually alter corticons in somebody, alter the way that they interact with with the uh, the cortical field if it exists, uh, they they have a very easy technology to just annihilate anyone they want, just make somebody dead instantly, uh, or turn them uh, into like super soldiers, turn tur turn them into like just mindless slaves, you know, and. Um, there are certain verses in Revelation that if that was how this happens, well, like the whole Mark of the Beast thing, part, part of the Mark of the Beast is you have to willingly accept it. You know, you have to be of that mindset. Uh, that, that, that's right there in Scripture. You can't, you can't I, I don't believe you can be forced to have the Mark of the Beast because it says that, uh, you know, th those who receive the Mark, they, they, they have to worship the Beast too. So they have to be part of that mindset. I don't think that's something that can be done to somebody. But... Um, if this whole hive mind kind of thing happens, uh, then that that could be an answer to uh, how how that could be you know an interpretation of how how that could how that could come about in the world. So um, so it, it's a scary thought because uh, I I love being an American. You know I, I I love America, but I totally don't trust our government all the time. <laughs> and, and even even with President uh, Trump, and I love President Trump so much. He, he's I'm I'm gonna get flack for that. That's considered hate speech, uh, not only to liberals, but to the church, too. Uh, I, I won't get on that rabbit trail. Anyway, but... <laughs> yeah, that's consciousness. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, um, uh, I still don't, I, I don't, I don't trust people in power, uh, especially with technology like that, because why, with a government who has no accountability, with physicists who have no accountability, uh, and right now they don't. And this is why I believe it's so important that Christians should get a hold of this stuff because uh, we need to know what's going on in the world that we're living in so we can hold them accountable. You know, the only reason they're able to do all this stuff is because nobody cares except the conspiracy nuts that nobody wants to listen to anyway. So we need like actually good, so uh, sound, grounded Christians, you know, people like like you and I, I hope myself and, and uh, our, our amazing audience, uh, the TSR audience. Uh, I love all you guys are great. Uh, we we need pe we need people like that to uh, get interested and in, and in, and start learning about this kind of stuff because when you have if if they develop that technology and you have a government that's not accountable to anybody, it doesn't even have to be America. It could be North Korea. Oh my gosh, can you imagine if they had access to that? We we uh, the whole world would be dead or we'd all all be. It just it would be bad. <laughs> I don't want to say you know, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> it, it just sounds to me like you are you are getting the science definition of. Uh, demon possession, and that's like, because that's, that's basically what it sounds like, and you're applying, you're basically the science behind being possessed by a demon, which I think is fascinating, um, that I've never heard that discussed like that before. Yeah, and that, that's that's the other part of that too, because they, they could create a new consciousness in somebody if 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 this field, if, if this is how if this is how consciousness works, they could replace your consciousness, which I imagine would, would kill you, but they could replace that with an artificial intelligence. Or maybe it wouldn't even be humans. Maybe it's the artificial intelligence that gets loose, uh, you know, on on the internet or in the in the uh, interconnected quantum computer world of the future. Uh, maybe that artificial intelligence decides, you know, humanity's better off uh, if they just listen to what I say. You know, I know what's best for them because I'm a lot smarter than them. Uh, it, it would be easy, especially if it's already a demon anyway, <laughs> it'd be easy for it yeah. to develop an ego. Um, yeah. And uh, it, it could just decide. 
that, you know, well, we'll just uh, enslave humanity and, and we'll tell them what to do to, to progress the world the way that it should go. Uh, and we, by not, by not um, being actively, uh, at, at, le at least considering some of these things, by, by just, you know, keeping our heads in the sand and just shutting it out and, and by thinking that we're too stupid to understand it, that, that's, that's one of the biggest parts of why Tom and I wrote this book is to show uh, you're, you're not too stupid to understand this stuff. You know, I, I can't, maybe you can't do the math, I can't do the actual math of any of it, but the, uh, the, the big picture stuff, the stuff that is important that uh, we should be holding these people accountable for or at least asking questions about, um, we uh, we're not too stupid to understand that. The reason that scientists and physicists put that out there is because they want to escape accountability, and they also know that they need funding. And if they have you know rich people that you know might be um, nervous about some of the things that they're doing, they they want the trust of those people. That that's why when the whole uh, a few years ago the whole um, you know is CERN going to create a black hole thing thing blew up. Uh, and actually, a guy in Hawaii, Hawaii tried to sue CERN, yeah. <laughs> and it didn't go anywhere. You know, the, the the case immediately got thrown out. It went nowhere. Uh, and you know, I don't, I don't, I don't believe CERN is going to create a black hole in the sense that we think of black holes. That's going to, you know, like annihilate the Earth because we we have the Bible. We know prophecy. It doesn't end like that. Um, but there are other things. I, I think that whole black hole thing was a big dis distraction because there are, are other things that they develop at CERN and they want to do at CERN, uh, like create a gravitational communication system. And I wrote a whole, I, I wrote a whole chapter about that uh, in the book and how it connects with the book of Ezekiel and the book of Revelation uh, chapter 9. Uh, but, uh, and, and, and they know they don't have to make it a secret because nobody's looking for this stuff, you know, and, and nobody's holding them accountable. And if anybody tries to hold them accountable, they're laughed at, like the guy in, in, in Hawaii, uh, because he didn't really have any, he had no science backing. He, he had no real evidence. He just felt like they shouldn't do it. And he thought that was enough. It's like, man, it's, it's great. That's great that you're trying to do something, but get educated first, you know, listen to a podcast or something first, like, so you, you can bring some kind of ammunition to the table. Uh, but that's why I think it's so important. Yeah, no, and I, I, I appreciate the call to activism because that's what we want this show to be about is, is not, is, is learning and then going out and changing things. Uh, and so guys, I got one last kind of connection to make in regards to quantum consciousness um, and because we talked about the, the dark side of it, of how demon possession could, could, or some sort of possession could come in and change our consciousness. But I also want to tie that into what we talked about earlier in um, God's field that maybe he produces to become omnipresent and how when we're tied into that, then we are, we are tied into the field or the God so we don't have to worry about. And I think that's, that's something that we need to be encouraged about too. Because it's easy to see this stuff and get really like, terrified of what's going on. But just to remember that when we're tied with God, like we're, we're totally fine. Uh, and then, so I guess something to kind of end on um, as we kind of wrap this up is I, one thing that you said in your book I thought was really funny. You said, yeah, CERN could really completely undo reality, and that's something that Christians can look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> yes, absolutely, because we do know all of this in the way that we know it, physical reality, it's it's going to end. You know, it, it's it's going to be changed. It's going to be different. We know the elements are going to melt with a fervent heat. And and I, I did a whole chapter on that, uh, what that means. That's actually in the Hebrew, it's talking about the elementary particles. Uh, there's this whole scenario called the Higgs field doomsday that a couple of physicists have talked about. Um, if people are interested, they can look up Higgs field, uh, Joe Licken, it's L-Y-K-K-E-N. Watch his presentation on the Higgs field uh, doomsday. It's, it's phenomenal. It's really interesting. And he, he talks about it in a way that anybody can understand. But basically, it's that the Higgs field right now is at this knife's edge of energy, where if, there, if, if just a little bit more was added or taken away, um, it could go careening off of this cliff where it would get super energized. And, and basically, that would mean that particles get so heavy that uh, they create black holes. Uh, particles become their own black holes. So everything is a giant black hole, and uh, all of reality is now the true vacuum where nothing physical can exist because particles are black holes. Right now, outer space isn't a true vacuum. You know, they, some scientists will say this stupid thing. They'll say, um, 
empty space isn't really empty. And I think that's the stupidest way to say it. That, that just sounds confusing and it sounds new agey and it's, it's dumb. What they, should, what they should say is outer space isn't empty or empty space doesn't really exist the way we think about it. You know, even, even in the furthest reaches of space, you still have fields, you still have what are called virtual particles, little quantum fluctuations in fields that, you know, they, they, they come and go, you know, as fast as possible. Um, those are called virtual particles, but you, you have all that kind of stuff. But if every particle became, uh, you know, a, 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 a black hole, then you would have the true vacuum where it is truly empty. That's why I, I believe that's why there's a Shiva statue uh, in front of CERN um, because uh, she, she, th that whole statue thing, Shiva's doing what's called the Nataraya dance uh, to undo a weary universe and bring a new one in. And they have that at CERN where they are literally pumping energy into the Higgs field. <laughs> and so it's like, come on, guys, like you got to, don't you know, like your own yeah. stuff, like you, you, you're the one saying that this could happen and you're doing it anyway. Like, uh, but uh, but it hasn't happened yet. But uh, I, I do believe that might be the process that God uses to uh, un to create the new heavens and the, the the new earth. You know, the whole the whole particle thing, uh, the way that that God has reality now is 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 awesome. But I, it's not eternal. It's not. Uh, we're, we're still in time. We have boundaries uh, called Planck boundary. You know, there's there's just a lot of things that eternity won't have. Now, if we're in our new bodies, we'll be able to withstand any change just fine. You know, we'll have, we'll have bodies, and I don't know how, I don't know the physics of that. There's, I can't find anything in scripture that I could even speculate on how it w works, but it doesn't seem like it's particles and fields anymore. Uh, so, uh, but, but yeah, so I, in, in the book, I detail how I think that the Higgs field doomsday thing will happen, just maybe not in the way that certain physicists believe, like with Shiva and the destruction of the universe and, you know, they'll be saved. And it's, it's just ridiculous. I think God has a plan. Uh, and th this is why we don't need to fear this. And this is why if and when this does happen, we can celebrate. Because if we're in Jesus Christ, if we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, this is all good news for us. You know, this is, this is good. The, 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 the Lord Jesus is coming back. Um, and, uh, and, and we get to rule and reign with him. So, that's something for us that, that we can hold on to, that no matter how bad things get, we are safe if we're, if we're his. And just like you said, uh, we're a product of, uh, of, of him. You know, we're, we're interacting, in a sense, with his field all the time. That, that's, that's how we, we, don't, we, we can't escape out of his hands. You know, that, that's how, uh, you know, the, the, the devil or an angel, nothing can take us from his, uh, from his hands because it's a done deal. We've accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. Uh, and he's going to take care of us. So no matter what happens, we're safe. Even if we die, we're still safe because we're his and and we're e eternally linked with him. Uh, so you're absolutely right, Sam. It it we there are dark things, uh, but more importantly than all of that, uh, Jesus is our hope. He's our rest. He's our salvation. Uh, Jesus Christ is the way that you know we can be interested in this stuff. We we can even prepare for it, but we don't need to fear it. And uh, so I, I'm glad that you brought that up. I, I don't usually get asked that. Uh, you, you know, a lot of times when I do interviews, it's they, they want the doom and gloom stuff. And I, I'm really glad that uh, you, you've given equal time to, to uh, both both sides of the, the, the coin here. And, and I think ending on that note that, you know, that's that Jesus Christ is our hope and our reward. And if, if you at home, if you don't know Jesus yet and you want to, you can ask him, and, and he will. It, sa it says in Scripture that if we draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to us. You don't have to understand everything right off the bat. You won't. Uh, you're not going to. Uh, I, I've been a Christian pretty much my entire life, and I'm, I, I'm not anywhere close to understanding everything. Uh, but that's where faith steps in. You take a step of faith and say, Lord Jesus, you know, I, I, I want to know you. you know, what, who are you? What do you, what do you have for me? I, I don't understand all this salvation stuff. You know, uh, he will teach you. If you if you have a willing heart and you really want to know the Lord, he'll meet you halfway. You draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to you. Meaning, you make the first step, you know, because you have freedom of choice. He's he's given you uh, free will. Uh, he's not gonna he's not gonna uh, force his way into your life or anything. But um, 
you make the first step and ask him and he promises he'll meet you halfway. You know, he'll, he'll draw nigh to you. So I challenge you at home, if, if, you, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ yet, um, try him out. <laughs> I mean, what, what really, what's the worst that could happen? Try, try Jesus, uh, ask him, uh, talk to him, and see what happens. Amen, man. That's, that's, that's wonderfully put. I couldn't agree more. Um, and uh, yeah, if you don't know the Lord and people are saying science and, and uh, the Bible can't work together, I mean, we just proved that wrong on the quantum level. Amen. Uh, so, so thank Josh. Thank you so much for coming, uh, being on the show. Uh, so where can people find you? Yes. Uh, well, as, as far as right now, sharpeningreport.com, although once uh, the official handing over of the show, you know, goes completely to you, that'll be your website. And I'm, I'm going to I'm going to have a different one. But people can find my stuff on sharpeningreport.com, uh, which uh, I, I, I'll have to update. Uh, but also skywatchtv.com. They can find all my stuff there. I think Tom still I think there's still a big uh, package uh, with uh, our book, Abaddon Ascending, and if it's the same deal, it has like $400 worth of other materials that go along with the book uh, for only, I think, like thirty nine ninety five or something like that. So it's, it's a really good deal. I think I think it's still there. So if people want to go to skywatchtvstore.com, they'll be able to find it. Uh, at the very least, they'll find the book, and I'm sure it's in some type of uh, uh, package because Tom likes to, he likes to do that. He likes to take care of his audience, which, which is really cool. Um, and then people can find me on Facebook. I'm always on Facebook. And uh, if they want to email me directly, it's Josh, uh, Josh Peck Disclosure at gmail.com. Or if it's easier to remember, uh, jpeck at skywatchtv.com. Awesome, Josh. Thank you again sir, for coming back and talking about uh, science and religion and the two difficult um, the difficult things in our world and kind of combine them together. It's been great. Um, everyone else, thanks for watching. I appreciate you tuning in for the first of many shows. Um, I hate when people at the end of YouTube videos always ask you to like and subscribe, so I'm not going to do that, but I appreciate it if you do. I'll um, do it. Like, like, share, and subscribe, everybody. <laughs> oh, subscribe so much, please. <laughs> uh, take a look at our other channel that all these videos are going on to. That's where the, the new home's going to be. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys learned a lot, and uh, comment below on any questions you have, and hopefully we'll be able to answer them for you. And take care, and God bless.